Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Two in the Cooler. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. Before we get into this unbelievable episode we've got with uh, one of our favorite people to talk to, P. Millie, got to tell you about the big news. I teased it for a long time. Finally premiered it last week on the show. We have got new merch. Not just new products, but a whole new store. The store is snackspot slash creator slash teespring.com. The reason it's called that is because Snackspot is the name of the company that owns this podcast as well as Scheming and Dreaming with Ben and Jake. On this new store, we've got pint glasses, we've got bucket hats, we've got water bottles, new great products along with all the favorites. We've still got the same quality hoodies, the same great quality t-shirts, long sleeves. We've still got the logo merch, the hashtag pizza tipping, and the Matt Can't Read stuff. Everything you need on there to get ready for winter. Stay warm, get yourself a nice hoodie, something that's going to make you look good, make you feel good, and check out these new products. You're going to love it. Again, that's at the new store. It's Snack Spot S-E. That's the word snack, the word spot, the letter S, the letter E slash creator slash teespring.com or you can make it easy hit the link in this show description or in our instagram bio link's going to be in both those spots check it out we've got all the merch from this show and all the merch from scheming and dreaming it's new it's fun you don't want to miss it i was somewhere yesterday and a woman almost ran into me and do you think she looked me in the eyes or said anything no she didn't because the place I was at was the worst place in the world a grocery store I hate going to them and there's no need to why make life harder on yourself and jump into this monkey den of terribleness avoid all that and start using instacart instacart is great not just for groceries but some of your favorite products from some of your favorite local stores and the best part is right now two in the cooler listeners get free delivery on their first order of ten dollars or more all you got to do is spend 10 bucks and you get free delivery. Instacart will deliver it right to your front door in as little as one hour. Hit the link in the show description. Start using Instacart today. Make your life better. This episode of Two in the Cooler is brought to you by 13 Monkeys All-American Whiskey. This whiskey is made right here in Buffalo, completely American made, and it's veteran owned. Right now, 13 Monkeys is available at over 30 retail stores in the western New York area, including Buffalo and Rochester. You can get it at stores like Outlet Liquors. Check them out. You can also order 13 Monkeys when you're out having a drink at bars and restaurants, including Vice and Neat, right here in Buffalo. Be sure to check out www.13monkeys.com for a full list of where you can purchase and order 13 monkeys they gave us some to try this is their special edition uh, mafia mayhem juice that like i said you can actually buy this at the stores it's a uh, whiskey bourbon mash and the reason that i like it is because it's smooth you think it's not smooth uh, you got something else coming to you to you because it is good stuff. It's great if you know what you're talking about and you're already a whiskey lover. It's great if you're looking to get into whiskey. Try it. It's also great to uh, mix with different things. They recommend you mix it with root beer. And I'll tell you what, it's actually pretty good. I don't like root beer. But I like 13 Monkeys and root beer. I'm thinking about having one right now, actually. But i got to keep it professional. Can't do it on camera. Anyways... Be sure to check out 13 Monkeys. That's www.13monkeys.com or check them out on Instagram. Hit the link in the show description. Full list of where you can order and purchase 13 Monkeys. Drink to honor. Drink responsibly. Well, we're here. Oh, See, now we right do... Now? Uh, yeah, no, we're going. Now we do uh, like a little pre-flight checklist we have to go through. Nice. Um, because somebody uh, that's at this table, not to name any names... But um, fucked off a little bit last week. Okay, and we I did didn't record. Fuck off. I fucked. Oh, it's up. not me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so no, we saved. did record an entire episode that doesn't exist. It's the it's the forgotten episode. Yes. Um, if you listen to last week's updated version, you would <laughs> yeah. know that it's the forgotten episode. Right off the bat, I have a question for you. Did you just get a new tattoo? I did. Can you tell? Cause it's shiny. Yes, I can, and I'm, it looks very nice. Thank I'm you. looking at it. Thank you. That's part. That's like one of the 18 reasons why I have my hoodie like this. Yeah, cause you you know. Yeah, you got to make sure you can air that puppy out. Right. Nice, nice, right. nice. 
Thank you. Andrew, when are you getting your next tattoo? I don't. Well, my next and my first. I uh, don't know. Because I don't know where I want to put it. Honestly, don't just... get one. You'll never get a job. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get one ever, dude. Dude, so They're I... there forever. They don't even scrub off when I wash it. Yeah, that's bullshit. I just, our dad I says that was, all the I time. I thought this was only yeah. supposed to be like, on you for a couple uh, weeks. It doesn't make any sense. Like, I just, that's just not the way things are headed. Like, everybody <laughs> has tattoos now. Yeah. Like, you can't. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. No, but it's just so fun to say. Every time someone's <laughs> like, oh, I like your tattoos. I should get one. I'm always just like, don't do it. You'll never get a job. And I'll say it as I'm working, like at my job, too, just, yeah. to, like, just to have fun. Mm-hmm. Well, the good thing is Andrew doesn't need a job. Nope. Perfect. We don't Tad know why up. yet. Yeah. <laughs> Tad up. Na- yeah, neck, face, whatever you want, Andrew. It's all you. Not on the neck, because I want to get Dune, like the from... Like the word Dune, and I think like this is the way Dune? to do it. Like Dune, like uh. the book and the movie that's coming out on Friday. Oh, but not like the font of the movie, like the font from like the book, the copy that our dad which year? Has. Yeah, which year? Which edition? Because we I don't know. know. What I you just collect bought, them. I ju- yeah, I just bought two new ones. <laughs> the same week. book. Yep. I co- yeah. What are What are you gonna do? <laughs> collect better things. I collect other things as well. Yeah, like not scabs. As good. God, yeah, that's he has his scab collection. No, I don't. Don't like, say that. Like peel and yep. place I assume in a that's box. what he means. Yep. Shoebox. You yeah. get him in like those little baseball. Uh, right, yeah. Right. See, <laughs> it went from yeah. I don't have a scab yeah. collection to don't you be talking shit. But if I did, this is how I would do it. Would do it. Yeah. How you would do it correctly. Don't be disrespectful right. to my scab collection. Yeah. Um, Preston, last time you were on, this is my recollection. Yeah, Preston's on. By the way, that's me. Last time you were here, I got it again. This is what I remember happening. It was like things were, it was just starting to get warm out. Yeah. And you came in here. We had a great episode. It was a lot of fun. And then if I remember correctly, you just kind of walked out of here and you were like, oh, I'm going to have the best summer of anybody ever. Yeah. Career wise. Yeah. Um, and then you did it. <laughs> then I, I did. I, I tried living up to it as much as I could. Yeah. I mean, I think I even messaged you this weird thing that was like, you made this the summer of P. Millie. Did my best, yeah. You put out, like, an unbelievable number of songs in, in like, it was like every week or every other week there'd be a new single out, and then you're still going with the remixes, and then, what was it, last week or two weeks ago with the show? Uh, that would be, what's today, eight, 16th? Today's the, at least the 18th. 18th? Uh, probably the, the 20th. Last, yeah, the today's last, the 20th. 20? Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. Last, uh, last three days in Nashville, it all feels like one mm. day, so I'm like, ugh. Uh, so, yeah, it was the 8th, October 8th, so Friday of two weeks ago. And that was unbelievable. That was the little TJ show. Yeah. And that was an absolute blast. Felt like, a, And I know it's so corny, but like it literally felt like a movie. Like, unbelievable, just sold-out show. Like, you couldn't even – no one could get around. Like, the line – I walked out to like go hit my car up real quick because I had to be there like four hours early for sound check, and I just walked out the front door and the line just went down Chippewa and then uh, down Franklin and then hugged back around that other street and I was just like, this is fucking absurd. Like I can't believe I have the opportunity to perform here right now, and yeah. it was so special. When you see a line like that or when you saw it, did you have to like? Bring yourself back for a second so you could focus on the show? Or does that all blend together for you? It kind of all blends in. Because it's just, there's like only three or four like moments where kind of my mind is ever just like at complete like still. And like I feel like I'm in an element. And one of those is just like everything about the, the performing aspect of stuff. So it's like, it's like locked in. Like at that moment, I was just like, all those people are going to be in this venue and they're all going to be enjoying the art that i made like it's not it's it's so it's euphoric it really is a euphoric feeling so do you when you have a like that performance i guess for example Mm -hmm. how well do you remember when you were on stage oh i could relive it i could close my eyes and like relive every single every single second of it yeah I feel like that's different from a lot of people. Really? You think they're kind of just I like, mean, it all happened so fast, and they're like, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, no, it's like photographic memory. Like, close my eyes, I could see it all again. I had a salad for lunch today, and I don't even remember making it. So, <laughs> um, Well, to, to be, yeah, okay. Well, it's moments like that. <laughs> photographic memory is only in very, very, very slim times. Like, I don't even remember getting this coffee now that you yeah. mentioned it. But it's here. But and I you got it. it. Now yeah. I have it. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Right on schedule. And you can enjoy it. And I can enjoy it. Unlike Andrew, who doesn't have a coffee. I had... Nice. 
Like, oh, it's <laughs> nice water. See, yeah, I'm staying hydrated. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Good for you, Andrew. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, way to take care of your body. That's how Once in a while, I give it a shot. <laughs> so you don't have an issue being present during the performing or anything. Mm-mm. There. That's awesome. There and ready, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of people, they... So then, does that relate to like your level of nervousness at all? You just not nervous? What do you think? It's weird. I'm not a particularly nervous person because I'm kind of like it is what it is. Like I'm doing what I'm doing, and I'm just gonna go. And it's not really like I don't really have like a awkward button or don't or like an awkward like sensation or like a like a sec like an embarrassment type thing. It's just kind of like it is what it is. And if it didn't go the way you wanted to, like you just laugh it off and then on to the next thing. But uh, yeah, no, it's just. All there, all locked in, ready to go, whenever I have to be. <laughs> it's, it's so fun. funny how little I relate to that. Right. <laughs> Andrew's never been locked in once. <laughs> I'm locked in. I'm locked in, but um, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no awkward switch. I feel like sometimes my whole life is that. That's all right. It's either I, I'm a little uncomfortable or I just could not give less of a shit about <laughs> things. Those are my two modes. Nice. Those are solid modes. Except in this Just spend more in time in the in the other mode. Yeah. Less time in the first mode. Yeah, the no fucks given mode. It's yeah. a fun mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've been thinking about that a lot more lately. <laughs> Especially because um, I've been watching a ton of Seinfeld. <sighs> and that's something we talked about a little last week. It's like he... um. It's so uh, funny because he doesn't like he just kind of says things. He says things right. Like you ever watch? Do you watch Seinfeld? Yeah, and Andrew, fantastic show. And, Probably a top eight ever. Yeah. yeah. So the the phase that I'm in in my life right now because you know it just got put on Netflix. I've been watching like start to finish, watching it through. Yeah. Um, and we've been saying that Andrew watched way too much Seinfeld growing up because <laughs> the character traits that I hate about him. Are all one, I'm just kidding, but every his entire his entire person is based off of like loosely a character of Jerry Seinfeld. I love um, it, and because he does that thing, not quite as well as Jerry Seinfeld does it, but Jerry Seinfeld just says things yeah. because internally they're funny to him, and he says them so fast and just so like. Like, he doesn't make it a big deal that he's saying. He just says them in, like, a kind of a monotone voice to the point where the majority of people that he's talking to don't realize that he's, you know, kind of making fun of them. Yeah. Or at least for his own personal gain. And that's how Andrew talks almost exclusively. Uh, yeah, see, that's things. how I'm trying to be all the time. <laughs> that's the part of me I like is, <laughs> which I don't think is a great thing, but no. it's the one yeah. I have the most fun with. Yeah. Like so what, Andrew? So now that we're here, what parts of yourself don't you like? Let's yeah. Let's <laughs> oh my dive god! On. This I'm just okay. kidding. I don't care. Yeah, thank God. Um, this podcast is oh, too long. Is yeah, too short. Too short. <laughs> yeah. Too short for all that. Uh, I was when you said that. I actually have this uh, this weird. I guess it's a personality trait where I can't stop talking in references. It's like when you like your quick little like the monotone like just kind of say stuff and like see if it see if it picks up. My brain, if as soon as something happens, it finds a reference from like a show, song, movie, anything, and I say it. And if someone understands it, it's like the best feeling ever. But if someone doesn't, I'm just like, yeah, figure fuck it em. out. Yeah, fuck em. right, exactly, exactly. That's their that's their problem that they're not getting it. And th- and when they don't get it, that's the part that I kind of like because like I because I feel like that's just a little treat for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the yeah, one I've been stuck on is a Talladega Nights one where it's like I don't know what that means, but I love it. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? They say see, <laughs> anarchy. Either, yeah, and <laughs> let's go see someone got it, so anarchy. I'm happy. I don't know what that means, but I love it. I love that. That's so funny. First time I saw we saw that movie in theaters. And I hated it the first time we saw we it. We were young when it came out, though. It came out in 2006. That's my guess. That sounds correct. Accurate. I'm but I remember it. walking out of that theater, and I was like, Could've I did not like that movie at all. Shake and But bake. now, Shake and Bake, yeah, there's something about that that rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> I was obviously wrong, and since then, I've rewatched it. Yeah. And it's like, I'd almost say it's an underrated movie at this point, but. Can't go wrong with a little Will. 2006. Good call by me. Just saying. Nice job. Plus one. On oh, you day. nailed it. You yeah, like I nailed spot it. on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Mm-hmm. It was that directed mine. by Adam McKay too? For whoever I you think want it was. To be. It was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll say it was um, directed by whoever. Scorsese. Yeah. Um. No, I liked. Uh, there's a couple funny like parts of that movie that I will always laugh at. Little shit too. Not the jokes that they make when they're you know 
that one scene when they're all at the dinner table and like you know he's saying the prayer and that's all funny and stuff mm-hmm. but just the meal itself is what is hysterical <laughs> to me like so much kfc like yep. taco bell you know, like you know because you know that one of them went to the combo kfc taco bell <laughs> and bought oh, all I of went that to food one of those the other day yeah those are the that's yeah, that's top tier. You could get a quesarito and a famous bowl in the same fucking restaurant. <laughs> that's the American dream. <laughs> we did it. For more. Can you ask for more on the fast no. food point? Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. <laughs> we got them. Except, you know, slight note towards Taco Bell. You can only get the quesarito mobile order now. You can't uh, You can't walk up to a window and order a quesarito, which pisses me off. Could you ever walk up to the window? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you can't walk up to the... You can't walk up to the... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm back to even. You know, <laughs> minus one. That's bullshit, though. You can't get a quesarito at the drive-thru? No. What are you That's so do? corny. Um, so you were in Nashville this past weekend? I was. Wow. It was fucking absurd. Did you go to the game or just down there? No, I went to the okay, game, too. Okay. Yeah, my, yeah, my girlfriend was down there, not at the game, just to do whatever yeah. people do in Nashville. Yeah. And um, it looked like a lot of fun. Uh, I would have walked my ass home from Tennessee after that football game dude, if I was there. Dude, I was like trying so hard to be patient because like I not I'm not really a confrontation in turn like I'm never gonna like go out of my way to like fight someone for talking crazy but like I'm really like I'll like snap back with little mm-hmm. like like comebacks. Yeah. So this one dude was like just kept we because you were trying to walk down like obviously leave the game and you're in Bill shit so everyone's like. Trying to like roast every like fan, but there's mo- at that point there were more Bills fans than Tennessee fans at that game. It was honestly insane. But um, this one guy just wouldn't stop like saying something crazy, and I was just like, dude, we were both in the two hundreds. Like I f- missed whatever great play you made to make you this hype, but like I'm gonna have to ask you to calm it down. And like he was just like, I'm sorry, my man. It's just we lost to the Jets a couple weeks ago, <laughs> and I just gotta have this one. And I was like, all right, have your fun. And then he just like walked like ten paces in front of me and kept screaming. But I was just like unbelievable but no it was uh i really did want to walk home after that game and i totally left my jersey on all night though on broadway you have to you have to but uh no it was electric dude like there was legitimately more bills fans in that stadium than tennessee fans and i thought that was absolutely insane and i've never been to nashville either was that your first time there yeah it was my first time there too dude it looks so cool like i know people say now you know cool people are like oh it's too you know it's overrun with like two. Yeah, no shit. There's a lot of fucking tourists there because it's a cool ass place. Right. And I want to go there, and I want to do all the things that people do there. Most of them being and or involving alcohol. And uh, you want to get a picture by the wings, don't you? Yeah, I want to do it all. I need it. <laughs> Honestly, the amount of Instagram likes that picture would get yeah, would be right. almost unstoppable. Oh, right. You're right. Those you're right. wings uh-huh. on the, the wall. The big ass wings yeah. on that wall. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually have a picture of our father at a set of similar set of wings, oh, yeah, not the hilarious. famous ones, but they have them at. Uh, well, they're everywhere Epcot. now. Yeah, all but the they wings. have like a big wall wings. of wings at Epcot in Disney World, and they have like different size options and color options uh. for all shapes and sizes of wings. And yeah, we have one of our father standing in front of a set of wings. Great picture. I love that. Yeah, that's an old time. What was it like walking around like uh, after the game? Then was it uh, the energy was low? Yeah, the energy was totally yeah. low. But at the same time, everyone was kind of like hyped that we actually did have the balls to like go for a play yeah. like that. And like I wasn't even mad. I was like, if you're honestly gonna lose something, like lose with like your fucking dick on the table. Mm-hmm, like, sure. don't kick a field goal and then like lose, lose in overtime because over Derrick Henry rips off another eighty yard run yeah, on your head. Fuck like I was like, dude, just. So you're gonna if and if one quarterback's gonna go for a sneak on fourth and one, I'm like, give it to our boy Josh, man. Let that dude try to get something done. Oh, I mean, it was, it was definitely the right call. Yeah, I think that I had like a I had a rough night that night, <laughs> like because I literally walked, didn't say a word to anybody, walked straight to my bedroom, just closed my door, shut it down, mm-hmm. and then I'm laying there for like five minutes. I'm like, fuck, I gotta go on Twitter. Like, I gotta see what's happening. Yeah, and. People are so quick to get mad at other people for getting mad. Everybody's like, you know, and I'm not saying there weren't some fans that were like mad because the Bills went for it, but the majority of people were just mad that the Bills lost, yeah. which is allowed. Like, I was pissed that the Bills lost. I wasn't pissed at the play call. Like, to, yeah. I wasn't pissed at how the game ended. I was just mad because now they lost and I had to sit there and think about the fact that we didn't win. Yep. Um, and people are like, oh, like a bunch of 
I was in the um, Twitter live of the Bills watching the post game press conferences, mm-hmm. and you know the comment sections going off. So many people were like, "Oh, so many fake Bills fans mad because they lost one game like it's early in the season." I'm like, "No, you know what? Fuck you. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm not mad at the the call. Yeah, I'm just simply mad that they lost. Like, yeah. so you know what? Maybe since it seems like you're pretty fucking happy that they lost, you're actually the fucking fake Bills fan. Okay, I just think that. I mean, it struck a nerve. Yeah, I was, I was not fucking happy, and I think that our defense just didn't play well. I think that Derrick Henry's a bitch. Yeah, and it's a big old bitch. Yeah, he's <laughs> he a large. Yeah, he shouldn't large be built bitch. like that and be able to move like that. That's uh, actually absurd. That's the thing. He broke the record for the fastest like run this season. Yeah, he, he like twenty one point six eight. I'm like, wow. dude, you're six three, two fifty. Yeah. Why the fuck are you moving that fast? It shouldn't. No, yeah, it's not okay. I don't. <laughs> it defies physics. The it's different. yeah, whoever was commentating the game, I'm pretty sure said, "I don't think I can go that fast on a bike." And I was like, "Yeah, it's probably close." <laughs> like, I, yeah, that. Uh, Nuts. But it was very upsetting. I'm, I'm, I all weekend I wanted to be there, and after we lost, I was like, you know Thank what? God. I'm kind of glad that I'm not there. Not that you know you can't get over it quick and have fun. Like if you're there, you're like, all right, whatever. Like, especially if you're leaving Monday, like, or leaving Tuesday, cause the month game is on Monday. Like, yeah. all right, get over it. Have some fun last night on vacation. But, uh, being at home, I was like, no, I was like, fuck this going to bed, mm-hmm. not having it. And then I sat on Twitter for three hours and made myself mad, but that's kind of what Twitter's for. You know? Yes. You go on Twitter for two reasons to laugh or to want to punch people in the face. Huh? That's kind of fair. That's very fair. I saw today Facebook's thinking about changing their name because I don't know, but they're th- like Mark Zuckerberg, I guess, wants to change it, but you know, a bunch of people got to like approve that or whatever because of all the just everything that's been happening with them lately, and everybody kind of blaming them for the divide themselves. in the country. I think so. Yeah, he wants to like yeah, completely and people are just going to forget that it was. It, the problem is, it's, it's happened happened that before. would fucking work too. I know the that's problem. the thing. It's happened before. People would be like, "Oh yeah, no, this is this isn't Facebook. This is whatever the fuck we're gonna call <laughs> they it." They keep the same format. Yeah. It's completely everything sure, the exact yeah. same. They just change the the app, the app picture, and I never the name f- of it. I never really yeah. thought about blaming Facebook for all of our country's internal issues, but I'm on board with that. I could get behind. I it. heard something interesting. Nice try, Marky Mark. <laughs> My God, that is the one guy I don't think should be called Marky Mark. <laughs> that guy. I don't know what you should call that guy, but nothing, nothing cute. That guy. That guy's a full-on psycho, dude. Like, he just, it seems like he's just so out of touch at this point. Because, I mean, he was, it seemed like he was always socially awkward, which is what led him to build this. Something where you don't need anything social to be social. social. My Uh, God, that is the perfect description of that. Jesus Christ. Um, I can't believe you pulled that out of nowhere. But it's it's so true. Yeah. Uh, But now with, like, his billions of dollars, I mean... He's he is one of those guys. I feel like a lot of times when we make fun of rich people, one of the things is like he probably doesn't know how much like a loaf of bread costs. If you asked him, it would be like, you know, twenty bucks or whatever. I feel like his answer would actually be that. Like he's a, a really out of touch dude. Yeah, which is tough. Maybe we should kick his ass. Oh my god, that'd be phenomenal. I wonder if he knows jujitsu though. Like he's one of those. Nerds. Uh, it could be. Nah, he doesn't know shit. He probably got bodyguards that know jujitsu. Oh yeah, I would say. Ouch. He's <laughs> also, fuck up Mark Zuckerberg though. Yeah. What was I? Oh, the name change. Oh yeah. Well, I, oh, I was listening to something, and um, somebody was saying how uh, because the Facebook al- algorithm and the algorithm of social media in general, it seems is like. You know, it's designed to show you more of the things that you are interacting with, and people, based on all this data, are more in- likely to interact with things that make them angry. Yeah. Um, the point that this guy I was listening to made was that they, at some point, did go in there, and they were tweaking that algorithm, right? So they, at one point, had a control group that was just kind of like their feed would just be natural, and the other one, they were like, okay, let's show these people... Uh, things that will make them angry. Let's show mm-hmm. these people that things that will make them feel happy. Yeah. Right. And obviously, whichever one they interact with more is going to be the one that becomes the ho- that builds the whole structure for the platform. Because the way you make money is by 
your daily average users and you need people to interact and be, and be going to your platform a lot. Yeah. So they experimented. They did basically a mental experiment on all of their users, and none of us signed up for that. Yeah. And I think well, that's we probably did. We probably just oh, didn't read shit, it. Oh, shit, those long agreements. I feel like they didn't even have to, like, do some sort of experiment. You can just, like, look at everything or, like, even artists. Like, the one that – first thing that popped into my mind was, like, second day out of jail, 6 9 drops a song – literally laughing and it's saying haha you're mad awful song but like broke the internet because it was like everyone was either calling him a snitch which was you know throwing the algorithm off it, he pissed people off and he was like it doesn't matter if i'm pissing you off he's like you're making me so much money he's like you're a dumbass he's like if you hate me don't comment on my thing and act like i don't exist don't and it the, it's the same type of concept it's like they could have just nailed that like oh we want people to stay on this app or we want to keep their engagement right. up let's just piss them off right the best way to and then you said only go on twitter to get yeah, pissed off and laugh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is true yeah say that about just about all those platforms but that's it's the best way to retaliate against something now is not to engage with it yeah it's, it's to be way. apathetic towards it mm -hmm. which Tough. was never the case it's not the case in the physical world right but that's no. that's where the transition that's the transition we're in right now, and I guess it's either gonna I feel like we'll be okay like at some point we'll kind of work things out like people will just get used to whatever this is like younger generations that grow up with this stuff will somehow figure it out like the world won't end yeah. um if that weren't the case, then I would say all this stuff will either destroy us or make us better, but I think eventually we'll we'll figure it out, yeah. I think a, a big part of it, though, is like, you know how, obviously, um, if a company, or like like a TV network or something, right, streaming service, whatever, if they have an actor that says something that's not good, even if it's like, even if it's like, okay, but people get mad about it, yeah, um, you know, this, like Netflix or whatever, they're getting, you know, two million tweets saying, fuck this, like, you need to ban this, you need to de-platform this person. Yeah. In the past, two million people seems like such a massive number, yeah. but it's really not. Nah. And we're still thinking in terms of that. We, I think we need to move past that and just realize, I mean, how many people are in this country? 300 million? I There's say 7 billion people in the world. I want to say Justin it's like Bieber, 600 million. So. 600 million? Yeah, it might yeah. even be 8. I have, I have literally Google no it. idea. Don't worry, guys. I got it. Let me just do a quick Google search. Love it. Someone's going to talk to Siri. Like, You're just going to keep it on I've had, and ready you to know, go. I've had like a long few days. I said before we got in here that I haven't had a, a real thought in four days. And I was absolutely listening to everything and trying to absorb everything that was going on there. But it was just... Like, my brain was trying to put together a thought, like, and understand kind of what was happening. And I was like, I was like, I know that they're talking about social media. I'm like, but I can't for the <laughs> life of me comprehend like this to put out a sentence and kind of engage in this conversation. So I'm just going to be Google guy for now. How do people are? Everyone, you need someone. You need someone on Google. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, maybe at some point. We'll See, I, I agree. Like, every that, group. But... All right. Is there 300 million? Okay. it's I'm, Both you guys get another guess. It's around there. So I'm going to see who can get closer. Uh, Seven. Well, like seven? No, Yeah, seven people. The fuck like, is how'd that, you, how'd you go Seven, how'd you seven go uh, hundred. Seven hundred. Oh, you're saying like yeah, 307? Yeah. No, say, no, 700 million. No, he, he said you were you were closer than I was. I, oh, I, was, I said oh, it was I, around I 300. Was, oh, okay. I'm gonna go th Make a 380. Guess. That's exactly what I was gonna people. say. Well, I'm gonna. I, I'm no, gonna go. no, I can't get. I guess. No, you can't. Okay, guess I'll say 420. Uh, <laughs> you're a fucking loser. It's <laughs> it's, it's, it's like 330. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. As of 2021, it was 329.5 million. Mm. No, 2020. Sorry. So yeah, two so million, not that many. Is exactly, but we're still thinking in in those terms. We have to. We have to. It's what I've been. I feel like I've said this on like the past four shows is that there are so many people out there like people on youtube that have like you know 10 million subscribers or whatever and we've never heard of them but yeah. they have a very dedicated fan base well right. that's yeah and you have to remember that's you know 300 plus million people not including the couple thousand people that are still 
hiding in their Y2K bunkers. Right. Yeah. yeah my, you might have solved to, those. You have to you include, can't, include can't those them. people. Um, I do kind of agree with that, though, like, because everybody has such a wide, like, variety of access to different things, you know, the amount of people that you consider to be enough to move forward with something in certain cases should probably have to be more. Mm -hmm. But the thing about stuff like that is, is I bet you when you're, you know, when when you're a company, whatever you are, when you're an organization... If people, so if there's something controversial, not even controversial, but something that some people don't like, the people that do like it, even if it's a majority, aren't necessarily going to tweet, hey, like, we love this. Don't get rid of this. Because yeah, they're right. like, yeah, we exactly like it. Exactly what we just Never, said. Yeah. We oh, is that what was going well, on? not exactly. Yeah, see, <laughs> like we, we do now know, like we were saying, that people are more likely to interact with things that make them angry. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, like we have to. We have to stop thinking. We just have to change the whole scope, which is crazy because it's, I mean, I feel like it's basically embedded in our DNA. Andrew but, takes on big tech. We should do a segment. That would go so poorly. I wouldn't, I, I don't think I would do a good job. Why? Well, them. Well, where would you start? Where would I start if I were going up against big tech? Uh-huh. Um, Congress? No, I don't, I don't think I don't that, know that's probably that's big the tech. best thing they <laughs> That fucking guy. As, did you see that thing? That guy asking um, what they're gonna do about Finstas. What? Didn't we talk? We talked about it with Nate. Which oh, again, and unfortunately, we got a race. Shout out to Nate. Check out all the Ivy League stuff. Those guys, I fucking love those guys. Yeah, there was a congressman who because the like he said, "What are we gonna do about Finstas?" So, yeah. so this is, That's a direct this is what quote. happened. The, um, what the there's fuck? this woman who used to work for Facebook. She's like the Facebook whistleblower now. She was testifying fake, in front fake of fake whistleblower, fake whistleblower. Yeah, whatever. But um, she was testifying in front of Congress, and this guy, you should have, you. Should, I wish we could play the clip. He is like so serious, and he's like, you can tell this is his moment. He knows the cameras on him. He's uh -huh. like, I'm gonna show America. I'm going to show my constituents. I'm going to show everybody that I am coming down hard on these tech people. And he looks at her. He's got, like, his glasses down on his nose. He's like, what are you planning to do about Finstas? How are you going to get rid of Finstas? And she, this woman, God bless her, she is doing such a good job of trying to politely say, I don't think you, have a, you know what that means, man. And he's, he's like, just, first of all, I don't give a fuck about a Finsta. Second of no. all, this dude, so he, so that dude woke up this morning or that morning, right? He brushed his teeth. He got ready. He put his glasses on and he walked <laughs> into that fucking establishment with that yeah, quote He walked up mind. Capitol Hill. Dude, passed with all the that, bills that were That was there. his ammo. That was, that was his mic drop, basically. He's like, mm -hmm. this is what's going to blow the roof off the place mm -hmm. is we're going to crack down on Finstas. And again, that, and again, somebody's got to do it, right? It's just uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get the petition ready to ban a Finsta. Yeah. It's just one of those things. Like maybe we should start a pro Finsta movement. Let's start. Okay. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not pro or <laughs> right, right, right. Well, we're Again. not a pro anything. No, podcast. we're a pro nothing <laughs> podcast. <laughs> as, uh -huh. as described. Uh, that's actually not true. We are pro the troops. Yeah, we're pro the troops and we're pro the kids. Yeah, troops and the kids. You're and you're pro friends hate. We are pro. Fr oh, pro, pro friends we're, we're more hate. of an yeah, anti yeah, yeah. friends. Yeah, right. We, you know, I guess you could kind of combine them yeah. into. What are you gonna do? Right. We're definitely an anti friends podcast. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We're Seinfeld all the way, though. That's yeah, a big Seinfeld guy. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, fuck. What was I gonna go with? I, I don't know, something. man. I ha I yeah. I've got nothing. Um, <laughs> there is like I seriously I don't know what I did today, but my I have. There's nothing going on up here. It's I it's really like Hulk. talking about all that stuff. It's though. straight up Homer Simpson with the monkey symbols going on in my brain <laughs> right now, like this. Yeah, that's what. And I, a little bit of caught a vibe. A caught little a vibe. bit of that. Yeah, we'll catch a vibe. <laughs> Get it going. Yeah. Catching a fucking nap over here. <laughs> like I'm, I'm really doing my best to stay engaged. I am engaged. It's just I can't, I can't comprehend it. We need to, we need to talk about something that'll make you angry. Oh, I know. We engaged. need to talk about. What? So uh, when I first walked in here, you had told me that you'd seen a movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, this I can 
this I can get on board. With. Yeah, we got to we got to get your. Actually, don't uh, don't go hatless during the podcast. Maybe I was getting a little too comfortable with myself. <laughs> um, we got to get your get the brain back working, and I know that that really hit that hit somewhere uh, enough for you to yeah. say it's a top five all I'm, time. Is, can can I be firing out spoilers? Oh, am I allowed to fire spoilers off? Yeah, spoilers for Fast Nine. Yeah, so I watched Fast and Furious Nine last night. <laughs> I've we've talked about it on the podcast a few times. I mean, it's not necessarily on the national treasure tier necessarily, but it's very close um, up there in movie series. What <laughs> the no, Fast it's and Furious? Not. Yeah, it is. They're so different. Fast and the Furious doesn't have any of the characters. <laughs> but that here, I'm a, I have to I, I have to tell you something, okay. and this is <laughs> honestly it, directed it solely at you. I had a point of realization in my life. Last night when I started watching the movie, I used to really love the Fast and the Furious movies. Like, I thought they were really good action movies. And last night when I sat down to watch this movie, like, yeah, they're very entertaining from an action perspective. But, like, I really enjoyed it because of how absurd it was. Oh. Like, that was... <laughs> She's playing footsies with me. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah that's... Yeah, that was totally me. Um, that was totally me stretching it out. And I feel like, you know... Not that you watch them, but if you were to watch them, it would be from a strictly like entertainment store per entertainment perspective, yeah. based on like, you know, the so storyline. So you loved it. So that's probably why your brain's mashed potatoes because you just soaked no, all of that in. I li- literally the only thing that I did productive today was go to a Rite Aid. That's all I did today, and like filled out some paperwork. Okay. That's so there's no reason for that's two more things than zero. Yeah, yeah, that's a full day for some people. <laughs> um, but uh, Fair. you know, you sit down to watch a new Fast and Furious movie, and you're like, "What the fuck is going to happen? Like, where is the storyline going? It's going to get fast. Like, what? And it, it's, it's going to get fucking furious. Yeah, it's gonna, it, and it did very <laughs> quickly, quickly, as it promised. Did. Um, so you find out in this movie, after nine movies, after eight previous movies, and a spinoff that are all related to family that Dom Toretto has a secret brother that we've never heard about. <laughs> and his name was... <laughs> and guess who fucking plays him? It's oh, not, we know. It's John, John Cena. Cena. It's John. And his name's John Cena. <laughs> I didn't know this. I didn't know John Cena was in this movie. <laughs> so did you go into this movie completely cold? Completely blind? cold. Yep. Not a... Not an... Not... No knowledge of it. And oh, I oh. was like, holy fuck, that's John Cena. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And it just progressively gets crazier from there. Um, Han, do you, there's a guy from the movies. He's named Han. He was part of their crew. He dies in like the sixth or seventh movie. Dies. Boom. He's alive. He pops it back out of nowhere. He survived nowhere. falling off that fucking train? No, he uh, he died in a car accident in oh, Tokyo. Oh, okay, 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 okay. But not in Tokyo Drift. Okay. Was, yeah. No, because that's – yeah. <laughs> Um, have we got to movie. Tokyo Drift in the like Fast and Furious timeline yet? Because that was originally like way in the future, right? No, Tokyo Drift is the third movie. It's a, isn't it the second movie? No, oh no, because Two Fast and Furious. Furious. Yeah. It's a third movie, but isn't it like doesn't it no. take place way in the way in the future though? No, there's something weird yeah, about no. that. Yeah, one's yeah, because it's, it, it's a whole different dude. It follows that. Yeah, it's other it's guy. it's a, yeah. yeah, it's a different. So it's like a spin off, like it has nothing to yeah. do with it. I feel yeah. like, but I feel like there is something weird. Like that t- kind of throws a wrench in All the right, timeline. All right, listen, you no, know, we're don't not, put we my don't brain in, in the pretzel right now, okay? okay? I don't have the. Uh, he said we're still on John Cena. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> Han is his brother. Yeah, so Han comes <laughs> back alive. They do, in fact, make it to space. Um, Roman and Taz go to space. Taz is uh, ludicrous. Nice. Luda. Yeah. And, Love uh,. They pretty much have a they pretty much have a a car that has a rocket engine strapped on it attached to an airplane mm. and they bring the airplane super high up in the sky and then they just fire the car off the airplane into space. Dude, that movie is gonna have rocket scientists punching air. And they're just gonna be so mad. Like, it doesn't shadow. work like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would I, based off what I saw, I agree Nuts. that it doesn't work like that. <laughs> because I they didn't like... have spacesuits, they had like scuba suits on, yeah. which apparently have similar um like makeups to spacesuits because you just need to like worry about pressure and 
oxygen. Right. That technology is very close to it, each other. Apparently, according to the Fast and Furious movies. Oh, my brain's going off on a tangent. Yep. Did you guys see this fucking dude that went like viral on TikTok and he's talking about how he can breathe underwater? What? And he was like, you have to turn the water into the gas that makes oxygen in your mouth. And he had so many people on this fucking app Good convinced that he was doing that. Sorry, no, I don't know why that went. But no, so that's but fucking no, hilarious. Now like I'm going to spin off into another TikTok. <laughs> have you seen the bones spin or it. no bones like trend on TikTok? No. Oh, well, you're going to see it now because I'm talking about bones it. Or and no it's going to pop up on your phone. Right. Yeah. It's gonna, so oh, that's a fact. It yeah. Really okay. Um. It's all right there. So uh, <laughs> my phone is there's this guy no on TikTok who has this 13-year-old pug and he starts his morning every morning by like going like record going up to the pug and recording it and the pug's asleep and he walks up to the pug and he says like you know today on another like today we're going to play another episode of like bones or no bones where we find out if my 13-year-old pug has bones or no bones and he goes up to the pug and he sits down behind it and he picks the pug up and he puts it on it like he puts it on its legs and then he lets go. And the pug either stands or just straight up <laughs> falls over. Because the dog's old. You know what I mean? So sometimes, yeah. like, it doesn't uh, it doesn't have the juice. So he... And then, Are so, like... fucking when, when the dog has bones, he it's stands. like... It, well, yeah. <laughs> but then the dog the dog instantly lays down after, like, it decides it can stand up. Oh, man, yeah. dude. And, but, but when it has bones, he, he gets, like, really excited. He's like, all right, like, today is the day. Go out there. Get shit done. When it has no bones, he's like, don't go do anything, pretty much. It's like the groundhog? Yeah. It's it's like a <laughs> groundhog, but every, every single morning. day. Yeah, every single day. Wow. And uh, so it's became like a, a super big thing where it's like viral and a lot of people seem to be basing their, their day daily based routines of based off of if this dog has bones or no bones. So let's tie into our hy- hypothesis. What do you think gets more of the likes, shares? Is it when the dog has bones or when the dog has I be- no bones? I would assume people love when the dog has no bones because then they're like, oh, shit, excuse. Yeah. And it's, it's I yeah. would say no bones. You know, and f- and it's a lot of funny things of like. Uh, said, oh, our day's fucked. Yeah. He's got no bones. It's today. a lot of funny things of people like, s- like making videos of themselves where they're like sleeping and they wake up to a phone call and it's their boss like. Where are you? You're supposed to be in this meeting that started 15 minutes <coughs> I ago. I got no bones, like, Oh, yeah, it's a no bones day. Sorry, like, I'm not coming to work. Yeah, shit like that. Um, and it's, I don't know. That's funny. It's, it's, the videos are, are entertaining, like, especially if you're a dog person. Because it's just this old dog, and it, and it looks so, like, you know, like. He's like, I don't want any of these days to be bones. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I always like, want no bones. Stop lifting my yeah, ass And they just morning. lift him up, and then he. And no bones is funny as hell because the dog literally just like, yeah, <laughs> just boom, right back onto its bed. Damn. Oh, man. Do you yeah. know what the dog's name is? Uh, I think it's called Noodles. That's fitting. <laughs> That's I could have made <laughs> that up, though. <laughs> nah, that we'll, could, we'll just call him Noodles. I know. Yeah. That poor pooch. Man. Um, yeah, so bones are I no think bones. old dogs probably have it rougher than old people. But we, do, we don't re- – we can't – it's hard to tell if a dog – is like losing its mental faculties, though. Did I say already this to, so dumb? Did I, no. See, dogs are really smart. A lot of dogs are pretty dumb. No, though, I think. no, no, no. They're well, not. Okay. Well, go ahead and. I said this the other day, and I wish it was on the podcast, but I don't think it is. Was like when I initially had the thought, like I don't understand why dogs haven't figured out how to talk English yet. I think their tongues are too weird. No. See, let me. Let, and the reason that I had this thought is because I was watching a video of somebody who had like a really, really thick accent and I made me start thinking about accents. And I was like, you know, it is weird how just based off where you live, you're, you're saying the same exact things, but they, the way that you talk sounds so different yes. just because the people around you are also talking like that. And then if you move somewhere, like, over time, you start to lose your accent. So then in my head, I'm like, you know, dogs are smart. Well-trained dogs. Have you seen those? And this is a big thing on TikTok, too. They click those buttons. Have you seen this? Yeah, I actually People have seen People train their dogs yeah. to yes. click all these different type of buttons so they can communicate with your dogs. Well, you know, they obviously have, like, vocal abilities because they can bark and stuff like that. Yeah. So really... You know, a dog's ability to bark is almost like their accent in my mind now. And they can comprehend English because they learn words. 
So why can why have they not figured out how to like you know it not speak full blown sentences? Yeah. But like, why do they bark when they have to take a piss instead of saying like piss? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if because I've actually tried this because I was really interested. I don't know if dogs necessarily even know the sounds, but I think they've picked up on the combination of like the actual expressions, like, expressions, yeah, body language, yeah, sure, body yeah. language plus. Like well, the sound. Did yes. you guys ever hear about that horse that could do math? This was in the um and also we're recording, right? I just yeah. want to make sure. Are we? It yeah. says recording on the thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm just nervous. These motherfuckers, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the horse that could do math. So I wanna this was in the it was in America, I wanna say in like the eighteen twenties, somewhere around then. Oh, this was a this oh, is a long ago. time ago. Yes. This so, is not this is not real. So um <laughs> you could make anything up from the eighteen twenties. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah, I'm going to start doing 18, that from now. <laughs> you you already do that. You do that all the time. You but make not, up. Okay, but just not tell the horse time. story. So this horse, um, this guy, trained his horse to do math. He would put a very simple addition problem up on on a chalkboard. Uh-huh. It would be like you know, three plus two, and you'd go, go to the horse and you'd say what what's the answer? And the horse would slam its foot down five times or whatever the answer to the math problem was what they discovered so i'm getting ahead of myself so now this guy is like oh boy i'm gonna make a shit ton of money because i have a horse that can do math people are gonna be paying to see this so he would travel around with this horse and this chalkboard and they would accumulate these crowds of people and they would you know pay money they had chalk in the 1820s they did have chalk they developed chalk was chalk was developed right, during on, the renaissance he, yeah <laughs> But um, continue. That's a hundred percent true. No, but <laughs> so you get these crowds of people, and you know, three plus three, the horse six times would would slam its hoof down. What they eventually discovered was that the horse didn't know math, but it was reacting to the people's faces, so that if the answer were six, he would notice that the people were like smiling, like "Oh my gosh, the horse just got six and then yeah. it would know to stop. At that moment. Wow. See, that's... So it couldn't do... So it, it couldn't so do So it actually like couldn't do math. It could just So it was based on people. kind of what you were just saying about, yeah. like, the, the expression. Uh, yeah. Well, because animals, they're really not... Like, they're not conscious. They're not conscious. They're not... Like, they don't have the intellectual ability to, like... Like, a dog will look in the mirror and it'll be like... It, not, yeah. I don't know if... Mirrors like, confuse the shit out of dogs. Yeah, they're fucking... Or, like, they bark at, like, a dog on the TV. Like, it's, like, there. Like, yeah. they don't really have, like the like concept of reality but they're all animals they're just like instinct like we're we're the same way but like we just like can be like oh wait like i'm a thing like i exist but animals can't do that but they're like i think cats are this like felines are the fucking smartest most instinctual like animals well that's the thing is cats are very instinctual i cats aren't necessarily like like they they're not necessarily smart but they just know everything like by their nature well but, but like people are, like i guess that's what you gauge like smart like a dog can get better trained because it's like the dog's more of like a companion yeah like but like people are like oh the cat's not smart and it's like the cat is smart it just doesn't listen to you because it doesn't give a fuck we're yeah, like a right. dog the dog loves you more than anything but a cat's just like like you scratch me and give me massages but like i might leave for five days and go survive eight blocks away and then i'll come back whenever yeah. i'm ready see if you could teach a cat math, the human race would be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> we would be we because would get like math, up. knowledge of math. You know, if you taught one cat math and say that cat goes and teaches ten other cats math, <laughs> so it was. So hold on, you're not just teaching a cat math. You're teaching a cat well enough that it, that can, it can then teach, it can teach, teach other. Hey, cats. listen, my theory's not done. <laughs> and then <laughs> at, you know, and then as a cat, as more cats begin to. You know, learn math. They yeah. begin to ask questions because that's what you know. Because that's what that's math what, leads to dangerous thinking. Which is <laughs> yeah, why we should get rid of yeah. it. No, we're, but that's why. I'm, Kibosh, but the whole thing. you're kind of get you're kind of going where I'm going. Like, then they start to like you know question things, and then they learn these more advanced math techniques. They're developing their own society. Next thing you know, they find a way to you know work science into the mix, and then they, they go to space, and and then they are running us. <laughs> 
You're you're j- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, and then Dom Toretto and fucking You're basically Mushi having the, cat. the artificial intelligence argument. I'm saying that what we shouldn't do cat. is teach cats man. Right, and people would say the same thing about computers, robots. Yeah, the, yeah. It's the exact same thing that you're talking about. I wonder how cats even got I would rather fight a f- robot yeah, than, a, than cat. a house cat. Me too. Absolutely. I would so cats, much rather fight a robot. Like I love dogs, right? I'll go off pet dogs, whatever. If you ever need to like gain access to a cat, like if a cat's under a couch or a bed or something, and the cat doesn't want you to gain access to it, Good luck. you are in for one hell of a fight. <laughs> like it is one of the most dangerous tasks you'll ever have to do probably in your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cats got it all. You they have a cat. They have knives for hands. Yeah, you have one. That's what they're for. Yeah, I got a cat, and it's got knives for hands, but we're pretty cool. You get along? Do you two just kind of coexist, or do you, like, the hang out with I? the cat? Whatever Cats. the cat wants. It's not up to him. <laughs> That's a good call. It's not up the cat to him. Does, the cat does seem to It depends to like, if it's a know. bones or no bones day. It depends, yeah, it depends <laughs> if it's a bones or no bones day. And the cat knows damn well. Yeah. If it's a no bones day. The cat's day? instincts let the cat know before you do whether or not it's a bones or a no yeah, bones day. Yeah, the cat day. doesn't even have to have TikTok to no. know if it's mm-hmm. a bones or no bones day. Um, I think what we should do is maybe a little who'd run of the week. Sure. Because. Let's get into it. Um. Obviously, we just watched. Uh, I just watched Fast and Furious, mm-hmm. so we had to bring the heat a little bit today. Um, so this week's Who Would Win of the Week, brought to you by Thirteen Monkeys All American Whiskey, is Dom Toretto versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Dom Toretto versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just reiterating. I'm just okay. rethinking through my. Well, process. I want to make sure you you remember so it too. So I'm gonna. You know, I'm gonna d- jump right in here and just kind of break break down kind of when we were trying to figure out who we were gonna fight. You know, mm. I didn't really think that there was anybody that could fight Dom Toretto, but then I actually got nervous and thought maybe we shouldn't fight Dom Toretto against the Ninja Turtles. And then you brought up a bunch of great points to me. Um, you know, you said because you said, well, can Dom Toretto? Would Dom Toretto beat a T Rex? Yes, that's obvious. Right. Um, in, in his sleep. And <laughs> and then you said, you know, and no effort and needed. On a no bones day, he'd be able to do <laughs> yeah. that. There's a scene in the new movie, talk about ridiculous things that happen, where he's in this like underground, complete concrete structure bunker, and he's fighting like 30 armed guards at the same time, and he's just like holding them off, like two hand pushing them, and then they kind of start beating him up. And they're on this, like, walkway that's suspended, like, X amount of feet above the bottom, like, high up, but X amount of feet from the top. And then there's, like, these chains hanging down, though. So there's these two giant chains hanging on each side of the walkway, like, four or five inches thick each. And while he's getting the shit beat out of him by 30 guys, he stands up and he grabs both of these chains and he fucking pulls them down and with one good rip collapses this entire concrete structure right on top of him and then like the next scene is just him waking up like alive with like laddie looking over him like to to those, you know, move, yeah, those Ninja movies. Turtles ain't putting a He's damn fucking debt. invincible. Okay, <laughs> dude. The Ninja Turtles aren't putting a debt. In There's that boy, a though. direct This is I okay, I know this is different. But perhaps it would translate. There is a direct, we are able to compare directly that scene to something that happens to the Ninja Turtles in Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. At the very end of that, yeah. Super Shredder, after drinking a whole vial of ooze himself, pulls down the docks on top of both of them, and the turtles survive. Yeah, Obviously well, they just different. throw in their shell. No, so that's what I'm saying, is is I do think that although Dom Toretto would win against almost anybody, this becomes a little bit more of a fair fight. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Hold and comparisons, right? You know, we're not necessarily talking cars. <laughs> we're not necessarily talking cars, but like, I mean, the Ninja Turtles are fast. They can move fast. They got a lot of parkour action. They're great skateboarders. Yeah. Um, they like to, you know, shred the gnar through the uh the sewers uh-huh. and whatnot. Um, and uh, and they can scrap. The question: Do the neural <laughs> Do the Ninja Turtles have um their weapons with them? For sure. Yep. Got okay. Him. That's a then. Lot. Can Dom Toretto have like a piece of scrap metal? Oh, he get yeah one. Cause that, well, two. Okay. Like, yeah, he goes two sometimes. Yeah, he could have like a tire oh, okay. iron. This is and like a, a scrap. Well, it, That's yes, a great call. Um, these are these are things that he oh he uses. like oh tire oh my okay, god big yeah. time tire then iron for guy. sure. Let's um, toss him in. 
I was going to say, his other go... The only three weapons he uses is, yeah, like a piece of metal he can rip off of a car, um, a tire iron or something like that that you could find in a car, or uh, a pump shotgun, and he'll use it... At the same time. He'll use it <laughs> from a range. He'll use it from, like, 300 yards, like shots that most trained snipers would miss. He'll hit with your regular old average pump shotgun. But we'll go no gun. Yeah. Because there's no guns allowed. Okay. There's so much to take into account here. I feel like first we have to rank the Ninja Turtles. Oh. I think that's what we have to do first. Because, worst case scenario, Dom Toretto whoops the dog shit out of one turtle and then Say steals his shell. Because oh. that would be bad One news. that's disrespectful. That would, that, the very. Donatello is easily who's getting his ass kicked. You think so? Yeah. I am so tired of people being down on Donatello. Yeah, I, I feel like you're sleeping on Donnie. Let's. Everybody says that to me, but no. Donatello's in purple, right? I'm making yes. sure. I, oh, yes. yeah, I mean, Donatello does machine. Well, you I do know what? think you it's know between what? him and I Michelangelo. Yes. I do think it's between them. I, I retract I a little bit. Well, especially because I think, and we can talk about this more when we get into it, but I think the closest stylistically is obviously Raph to so, Donatello. So yes, I actually am going to retract my statement a little bit, and I'm going to throw you guys off. I actually I like think that off. now that I. Th- now that I've mentally processed this, I think that Donatello and Mike and Michelangelo are two of the better suited ones to fight Dom Toretto, whereas um, I think Leonardo is probably his easiest target. And this is why. I feel like Donatello, I did come at him at first because sometimes he's a little like, you know. He just gets has a bad one, rep because but, he's a but guy. But he's also yeah. like the most disciplined one out of them all, correct? I, well, Leo is unbelievably disciplined when it comes to his training. That's why he's the leader of the Turtles. Donatello, though, he's, I would just say, he's more cerebral in general. Disciplined. Maybe not disciplined, but he's more of like an A personality in my opinion. For sure. Well, I guess so with Leonardo. But, I don't know. I mean, it's actually tough. All four Turtles are going are gonna, to... They're well rounded. I don't yeah. think there's a better. No, the more, I keep, I keep squad. trying to pick one that he would target first, and I kind of yeah. keep talking myself out of all of them. Um, well, see, I don't think that he would be the aggressor in this situation. I think Dom Toretto would. This is just how it would play out. He would. They would come to him. Yeah. I don't know all at the same time. I, if one at a time. I think that. No, specifically, I, Raph. Raph would send it up. Yeah. For sure. Raph would For just. For sure. Uh, b- guns a blazing. So, He'd get tossed. Yeah, that's a thing. Potentially, what would happen here is Raph goes in because he's a hothead. Yeah, right off and the rip. And Dom Toretto, if he can keep his cool, flip him around, he's he's out of commission. Right. Leo then, of course, goes in because he's the leader. He's got to lead by example. Let me take this guy down, show him what's up. Yeah. But if he gets a little distracted, maybe by Raph's, you know, the fact that Raph's unconscious, or if Dom just, I think Dom potentially could catch him. Yeah. Then Leo's out of commission, and then it's down to Donatello and Mikey, and they got to pull some magic out of that. Yeah, they got to they got to really get themselves together to take down Dom Toretto. Because also, I think after seeing the other two get taken out, I think that both of those guys, Mikey's Michael, gonna shit him pa- his exactly, pants. Exactly, they would really start to get nervous. I think they would panic a lot. Yeah. And Dom Toretto, he is <coughs> pulling down buildings on himself. I yeah. mean, he's jumping onto helicopters and and yanking them down. He's a pretty he's a pretty calm, cool, collected. He's basically character. Superman with no kryptonite. Oh man, <laughs> I feel like his only kryptonite yeah. is his girl, Dom Toretto. Right. Yeah, yeah, but that only makes him stronger, right? right. So it's not even kryptonite. Yeah. I would say that in a situation where. There's a little bit of confusion, and the Ninja Turtles think that Dom Toretto... So, Dom Toretto and his crew are probably trying to stop somebody from doing something bad, in which case they have to steal something that the bad guy is trying to steal. Right. The Ninja Turtles, you know, are misinformed in some way and find out that somebody did steal something that they weren't supposed to steal, and they go after them. Dom okay. Toretto shows up... or The Ninja Turtles show up to confront Dom Toretto. Mm-hmm. You know, Dom Toretto's not going to sit there and explain himself because he don't explain himself to fucking anybody. Yeah. He's just going to be like, you know, you guys should go back where you came from. You don't right. want to mess with me and my family kind of thing. Um, and then 
this is how the fight starts. So that's why they're against each other. Because realistically, you know, when you talk about vigilantes, they both kind of fall into the same category. Um, I think that... What is going to be their best way to defeat Tom Tretto? There, I don't know if there is one. He's a god. <laughs> if he... I guess it also depends on what universe. Like, if we're in, like, the Ninja Turtle <coughs> universe, I feel like they get a little bit, like, a buff. But if it's, like, if it's like a Need for Speed movie, or Need for Speed. Jesus. That's crap. fine. Fast and Furious, and, uh, like, the Ninja Turtles come into that realm, it's not even close. Like, I feel like he could just, like, snap Thanos snap his finger. Well, I think that. So we got, like, blend them. It's know, like a hybrid. I think that it also depends on what situation situation they meet in. Yeah. Like, if the Ninja Turtles come after Dom when Dom is behind the wheel of a Charger. Goodbye. But if it's if it's vehicle versus vehicle, though, the, the freaking Ninja Turtles, like, van that they have, that thing's sick. It shoots sewer lids out at people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that it, doesn't even fucking matter, dude. But Dom it doesn't Toretto, go to space. Dom Toretto, I have seen him do no. some crazy shit in cars. He, like, he is so talented with a car, he'll, like, push cars on purpose to like catch people falling out of other cars. He, he, oh my God, he's dodged heat seeking missiles in cars. He's blown up submarines with cars. He's done it all with cars, Andy. The, the teenage mutant or the teenage fucking mutant Ninja Turtles mm. van that shoots sewers wouldn't even make <laughs> Tom Toretto break a sweat. Does, like it wouldn't even be close, Andy. It wouldn't, close, it Andy. It wouldn't even be close. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. I just want to make sure that that like man gets... you you said well, if it's vehicle on vehicle, Don Toretto has brought vehicular warfare, direct movie quote from Ludacris, onto people before. So he could. <laughs> so you're saying Don Toretto behind a Model T? I was just going to be say, a match yeah, because guess turtles. what? It's, the car doesn't matter. It's the driver. It's the dri- <laughs> fucking fair, Dom, Dom Toretto in one of those little kid jeeps. Yeah, that you <laughs> would still, still be smoking that the, the Ninja suit. Turtles. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, their little van, driver van thingy. Um, Man. But, you know, we're talking about a fight here. We're talking right, about yeah, we're talking day. about combat. Um, I just don't see holes. I don't see holes in uh, Dom Toretto's game. I can't lie to you. Because he can take punishment, too. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I like. let's say the I turtles do... all jump on him at the same time. You know, whatever two are in front of him... I think he'll be able to handle pretty He's quickly, and it Man won't be enough off. time, right? And it won't be enough time for the other two to get behind him and really. And do you some see damage. that, like you see him fight, you know, groups of people at once, yeah. and that's the way that he does. Is and it, you know, it's it's like a tale as old as time. Like if if you're one v, however, it doesn't matter. Like the the first shot you take, you it's got to be hard, right? Yeah. Because you got to instantly inflict some damage, and that's the thing. It depends on how the turtles fight this because if they fight it movie style, which obviously I think they will, you know, people that fight in movies never have a good strategy going into the fight. Mm -hmm. They never like all attack at the same time and just stay on it. Mm -hmm. They all like line up like this and like watch their first boy get his ass kicked. And then the second guy charged him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the Ninja Turtles, you know, they are obviously strategic. They're very well trained. Um, They know how to fight. But I think that the sheer power of Dom Toretto and, like, strength, like, you you could have a turtle on each arm and another turtle, like, feeding him up the gut. It doesn't matter. He would break his arms free, like, bash the two side turtles' heads together, Superman kick the front turtle, and then, like, now he's got him spread out again. <sighs> the Thanos comparison that you just kind of briefly mentioned earlier, I think is a very good comparison now that we've been talking about it a little more. Like, makes a lot of sense. If you're yeah. talking strictly based off of, you know, facts that we know from the movie, mm-hmm. it's that there is nobody that is as strong as Dom Toretto. Mm-mm. Not even a group of mutant turtles. Also, I will say, based on the evidence that we've seen, Dom Toretto, like you have mentioned several times, has taken on multiple enemies before and come out on top pretty easily. Large, large, like, people, too. We have seen the Turtles all together go up against one guy and not be able to hack it. Yeah. And yeah. also, they are teenagers. Mm-hmm. That plays a role. They are, uh, you know, no, no matter how skilled they are, which is 
very which is very much yeah they're they are still less experienced than and, dom's gonna be and yeah. as disciplined as we say they are the majority of mistakes that get made by the turtles are because Excellent because point. they're young yeah. they they're they do every once in a while break that kind of discipline that they need to stay so strong whereas dom toretto always has a purpose right he's always protecting his family. There's nothing more important to him than his family. Right. So, but I feel like the the turtles also have that inherently built in because they are family. Yeah, but but Dom doesn't make mistakes like that, right? Like Dom yeah. doesn't make mental mistakes. He'll, he calculated. never will. He's very very calculated. Yeah, I do like though that like there there could have been scenarios in which Dom Toretto could lose, but like not to the Ninja Turtles like against other opponents. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you guys decided to keep it kind of the combat and like str- strategy related. Cause like, that's like a, it's like, cause Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is all about family. They're all like very, very physical combat and it's like the strategy. And that's a, I just, I don't know if they can handle our boy Dami T. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's a good matchup. It's a good matchup. It's just paper. that Dom seems to do all of those things better yep. than they do. Yeah. And the outnumber doesn't even matter for our boy. No, not for Dom Toretto. I mean, you know, turtles in a half shell. Turtle Turtle power. power. Doesn't matter. I think Dom Toretto wins this fight. I'm going to lock that in. Um, He's just... just, Go watch Fast and Furious. He's that guy. If you are are sitting here listening to this, (laughs) if you are sitting here listening to this, whether it be via clip or via you're listening to the show or you're just looking at it on Instagram, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, and you're like... Matt is so stupid. There's no way Dom Toretto would beat the Ninja Turtles. Go watch Fast and Furious 9 before you vote, and then come back to me and see if you think that Dom Toretto could beat up all four Ninja Turtles at once, because I do. So I'm going to lock in Dom Toretto. Yeah, me as well, Dom Toretto. I haven't even seen Fast 9 yet. Yeah, From the first eight, I already (laughs) believe in my boy DT. With he's uh, yeah. all my heart and yeah, soul. He's a special those breed. movies are basic. Those movies are Marvel movies now. Like those movies are superhero movies. They might as well point. be. Yeah. The ninth one is crazy. I know I did drop a few spoilers, but go check it out. Um. So vote on that on our Instagram. That'll be up on Friday. Let us know what you think. Um. Drop a comment. Do what you got to do. That was uh this week's Who Would Win of the Week. Brought to you by Thirteen Monkeys All American Whiskey. Drink responsibly, Andy. Nice. Got it. Um. I did want to get your thoughts, and I don't know if you're into hockey at all, Preston, but I did want to get oh, your yeah. thoughts on the Sabres. Oh, my God. Looking good. Eight, undefeated? What's the yeah, deal? Three yeah, 3-0 right um, now. They're going to go 82-0. That's, that's what I've saying. heard. Uh, that's the rumor So, I've, so I've heard. Woo! <laughs> 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 Eichel. Eichel's a mad so, man right now. That boy. Dude. So, <sighs> the Buffalo Sabres. I, I'm pretty sure I've already been on the record this year saying that the Sabres might not win 20 games. Holy fuck was I wrong. This team is good. I've said it. Probably 13 to 14 times between, like, the three games. So, I'll give it three hours each. Nine hours, I've said, you know, well, close to three times an hour. Well, 15, 30, 45. Is that three times an hour? Nine hours? I was nine listening. I'm not a horse, no, man. I can't do Nine that times three, 27. <laughs> um, I, don't horse, I don't know. I, I don't know where, where my numbers just came up. Whatever, whatever. They are playing so good right now for, like, very little. Re- like, there is a reason. Like, I don't know how deep you want me to get into it. I'm, I'm Aren't they all young in. bucks? Like, for the most part, it's a uh, very, very uh, young league. What I, it seems. Yeah, I mean, they, we do have a pre- – I think we have, like, the sixth youngest team in the NHL, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's funny because it's kind of a cliche that people try to use professional sports to debunk. Yeah. But if you really do it and do it well, it'll never be debunked, right? Like, you just have to – doesn't matter you know talent wise like if you just do the little things and like play the right way quack, you all quack, literally quack, it's, it's marty quack. duck they're playing yeah. marty duck style hockey right now like if you just simplify the game like take it and look at it in its rawest form and think like okay if we just all do our jobs consistently it doesn't matter who we play right you just have to do your job and right now every single player on the sabers top to bottom is doing their job which is something that is hard to accomplish. It's almost like, you know, obviously it's only three games in the season. I'm not going to go crazy and talk about, you know, Don Granado, Donnie Meatballs. He's the Sabres head coach right now. Mm-hmm. 
But he was interim head coach at the end of the year last year, and they started to play better, although they were still shit and their season was over before it even started. Yeah. They started to play better. So now they had, you know, the end of last season, all off season, you know, training camp, all that stuff to kind of get a grasp as to what he's trying to preach to them. And it seems to be working, right? They're just playing hockey at the most basic form of, like, do your job. If everybody does their job, we win games. <coughs> and it, it's working phenomenally right now. Mm-hmm. And it's the most exciting hockey I've seen them play in a really, really long time. And I, I wasn't going to talk about it, but I'm almost glad you did because I was at the game last night, you know, and their attendance has been horrible to yeah. start the season. Like opening night, not even 50% of the stadium was full. Like not a great look, but – Last night was the most electric I've seen a crowd at a Sabres game in years. Like, it was a blast. It wasn't packed, but it was loud. Everybody there was into it. It was so much fun. And it's like, I think, you know, and again, I'm not going to go too far and start comparing it to, like, what we've got going on on the football side of Buffalo. But mm-hmm. it's it's hopefully, based off of what I've seen the first three games, it can become a culture thing where the team continues mm-hmm. to do this and wins even though they aren't expected to, right? Because when you do stuff like that, even though you might not have that big name, you give other guys an opportunity to find roles that they didn't know they had to fill, right? And you just it kind of can turn into this snowball effect where all of a sudden everybody buys in, right? And that's what I mean to say. You look at a league like the NBA, like nobody believes in that system in the NBA because these all-stars kind of just bounce around to whatever team they want. They make these super teams. That's not really a thing in, in hockey, like, there's obviously teams that are better than others, but if you can get everybody on board with doing the right things, you can win a lot, a lot of hockey games. So I'm excited. I hope that it continues going. I think that a lot of people, you know, that are, like, hockey, like, acquaintances, you know what I mean? Like, they're not hockey fans. They know the Sabres exist. They'll be like, they all assume because everything that they heard before the season started that they were going to be the worst team in the NHL, all of this stuff, that the Sabres were going to suck. And I think that's a big reason why, even though they've been playing unbelievable hockey through three three games, you know, they still, like, their attendance still hasn't gotten bumped up. Um, for the people out there that don't really watch that much hockey that assume the Sabres are going to suck, that's not the case right now. Like, this, they're fun to watch. They're exciting to watch. They're 3-0. and um, Everybody on the team is playing well. So I'd like to, you know, encourage people to spend the $35, go fucking watch the Sabres game in person because, it's, you know, fuck, this team's good. Team's good. I like for that. now. For now. You know, there's <laughs> like always it. that possibility of the the rapid decline. The um, But uh, three games in, undefeated. So Love it. You kind of said something about this, but it is interesting how – yeah, before the season even started, a lot of people had this team written off. And it's weird when you compare that to the Bills, right? Because when the Bills were bad for so long, everybody still was super yeah, Bills are gonna be good this year. Them, yeah. yeah, You know? And we've never had that for the Sabres, that same thing. Um, Do you think that that's Sabre, just like the nature of hockey? The This is, might sound crazy to people that the, the Bills were never, ever as bad as like the Sabres – when the Sabres are bad, right? Like, the Sabres have been bad. Like, Do you like think the Bills, uh, there was a lot of years where the Bills weren't good, but it was like, oh, we could still beat the Dolphins, and, and like, oh, the Jags are still going 0-16 or whatever. Like, the Bills were never that bad. The Bills, you know, would always get five, six wins, maybe even almost get to eight, and then, like, lose at the end of the season. And that's more how football is, right? It's more over the – not – over the board competitive, but you only play, well, at the time, 16 games, one a week, and it's any given Sunday, right? That's what they say. In Mm -hmm. hockey, you play 82 games. So good teams have the opportunity to, you know, they're still going to lose games to bad teams, but over the season they have the opportunity to show that they're better, and worse teams have the opportunity over a long season to show that they're significantly worse, right? So when you look at how bad the Sabres have been, like the Bills were never – that bad the Sabres were right. very 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 bad and that all just comes down to though the nature of both of those games and how they're played at the professional level yeah. the way those leagues are structured yeah that is interesting though but I'm glad to see they're doing well <sighs> it was I'm telling I know I, I was t- I was texting my buddies last night and and I don't know this for a fact but I feel like they were 
getting like to the point of ready to tell me to shut up because I'm sitting at the game and like it was a bl- it was the most fun I really have had at a Sabres game in a long time and I go to a lot of Sabres games I, like a lot of them mm-hmm. um, and it like even though there was less people than usual everybody that was there was fucking buzzing like the place was rocking they do this thing now um where they have custom goal songs so each player picks their own song for when they score and it's awesome because like it shows a little personality right and like it gets people excited to hear different songs like jeff skinner (laughs) a guy who has struggled a lot for the sabers scored last night and his goal song is party in the usa by miley cyrus and i have never ever like seen that stadium that excited like in probably 10 years like the place was fucking juiced love that love that song choice too that's fucking hysterical yeah it, no it was it was a lot of it was a lot of fun speaking of song choices one of the things we talked about last time you were on because um when you released the album that you put out at that yeah. time uh it was such a diverse album yeah is there a type of music that you want to try to get into next a little bit? Oh, not at all. I'm actually working on three complete opposite things at the moment. Uh, me and the Brookhaven boys are working Ooh. on getting, we're getting a we're getting a studio actually pretty much built into their new house. A couple of them moved in together, so we have that going. Um, we've been in cahoots, and then uh, I've been working on a little bit more of kind of like I don't want to call it like pop. It's kind of like that, a little more of like a techno-y kind of, um, almost like a punk rock pop blend. Like, have you ever heard of the artist like Swaco? Mm-hmm. He's he's really, really good. Uh, it's almost kind of like, uh, do you know who, NF? Do either of you know NF? He's, I don't listen to, I, yeah. Not a big, oh yeah, you were talking about that last yeah. time. Bit. It's basically kind of like a, uh, a little bit more of like the singing, but it has a lot more of the rap uh, like hip hop kind of instrumentals in the background, and then the last thing that actually I have not said anything, and I'm going to release this information oh, on the show. We love that. Uh, I am very, very close to being finished with my very own Bills anthem that I'm going to be trying to very, very much pr- get I'm get in. the team get the team to see and uh, oh. and send. Uh, it's it's going to be special. I it's done. I'm that's going to be hyped. that's going to be the standard like now. I'm super hyped. That's gonna yeah, be the, this this builds. In. Me and a producer, we spent like three months just really perfecting the uh, the uh, actual instrumental itself, and uh, it's gonna be fucking crazy. That's gonna make all the difference because I feel like any time somebody tries to do something like that, mm-hmm. they really just like shoot it out real quick. Oh because yeah, they're no, like, this has been manifest. I've been yeah. That this has been uh, it's, yeah, it's been marinating. Oh, brain. it's been marinating. Oh, I love yeah. that. You, you know, sometimes you gotta marinate. Well, <laughs> I mean. I think all three of the things that you just said there yeah. are very, very exciting. Oh, yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I think this is something that you have like always done, but I wonder if it's conscious. Yeah. Is that, because again, to bring up your last album, how diverse all the, the songs were all so different from each other, mm-hmm. that's the way that it's, that's going to be the standard, I think. Yeah. Because... It only makes sense. People don't buy albums anymore now. They buy songs individually. That's the way it's been for a long time. Right. But I feel like people have still tried to force things into it. Mm -hmm. But an artist like yourself that has such a wide variety, those are the people that are going to be successful. Yeah. Because people run through and they're like, okay, I like this one. Right. That's what I'm going to listen to. Yeah, you can... can and there's a whole bunch of different ways, and there's a lot, like, it, obviously being an independent artist, but side note to all of the other independent artists, stay independent. Know your guys' worth. You're all going to get better. I, the amount of t- I've had, I think, uh, two offers now for uh, record deals that were just, like, I looked at the number, and, like, before you get super hungry, like, you see, like, oh, $200,000, like, that's awesome, but then you take into consideration, all right, 100000 that's going to get taken out they own all your music and like are you are is you all your time money effort and talent worth a hundred thousand dollars and you're like fuck no like that's not worth it at all so stay hungry and you can figure out your own lane but um yeah no there was there's two different ways you can kind of approach it at least in the art standpoint and that's what everyone says it's like you can you can try to find your sound you could try to find you know like um like a kind of like a drake or like a baby like you kind of know what they're gonna do 
before they like a song drops you're like i know how they're gonna sound right yeah and uh you can really kind of like hit your niche target audience which everyone kind of like if when you're trying to like like you don't care or like you want it to happen asap like you kind of stick to that formula but when you're more along the lines of like i just want to get better at music and like i want to find out like what i want to do and if tomorrow I wake up and I want to write a song that is nothing like anything I've ever made and like challenge yourself, like it's more of like this, the slow formula to like kind of gaining like the fan base that, that like you kind of want to get. But um, it's all a matter of just like staying true to yourself. Like there's no reason right. to uh, like, I, I don't care whether, you know, in a month from now, if I'm not, you know, living in California yet or something like that, like it's in due time, as long as you stick to your own process. But the, the, I love being able to just work on different stuff. And I think I it is like a conscience thing where it's like I'm always just trying to like grow. Like even like when you sit down at the end of your day, like I won't, I'm not like, oh, what am I doing tomorrow? It's like, oh, was there any situations throughout my day that like maybe I didn't react the way I wanted to? Or was there a point in my day where I had a thought that I, you know, I didn't really like how it made me feel? Like why did it make me do that? Like it's always kind of this like grow, grow, grow aspect. And like – honestly probably started with music because i got so meticulous like i stopped gaming completely too like i stopped gaming like i hardly even like watch that much like tv anymore like if i'm not like brainstorming or like writing lyrics or like just like out experiencing stuff to like get a little bit of like inspiration like it's just it definitely is kind of once once you find something you really love and you like you because you take those like principles and those morals and everything about like that passion and then it trickles down to the rest of your life and it's fucking awesome whether it be through sports or whether it be through podcasts or anything you do once you like really love something you care about getting better at it and you don't give a fuck really like even the end goal like you just like love to do something and then that kind of just you learn a lot about yourself once you find something like that and it's fucking awesome it's all a pursuit towards authenticity yeah for yourself and i think that's what people uh, want who consume media i think that's what they want more than ever and yeah i think people if you're an entertainer i think people like to see you work yeah people like to watch you develop into things mm-hmm. and sometimes you know it doesn't always hit but even then i think it still does in a way because yeah. people realize what you're trying to do I guess you always have people that are going to try and say something about it. But also, but at the same time, I mean, we all know those aren't real people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Right. People like to say things online because they make them angry. <laughs> right. Um, but I think you just summed up the creative process in probably the best way that anybody ever has for the way that media as a whole is starting to develop. Yeah. If people don't have the mindset that you have, um, they need to get it. Yeah. It's just that you're going to sign yourself up for a lot of disappointment in yourself or worst case scenario, you might start doing really well and then you might try to veer off and you're like, I want to make something that feels more like me. And then now you have a little bit more of a following and they're like, Hey, we fucking hate that. And it was like, well, this is me. Yeah. So it's like, stay true to yourself the whole fucking time. And if they, if they want to hop on for the ride, they'll hop on for the ride. If they don't want to hop on for the ride, you or yourself the whole time, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah, get on board. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's the dangerous thing to do is to, like you said, do kind of the Drake and the baby way. Obviously, those are those guys are so big right now. Right. And they could do anything, whatever they want. They, they, Someone's going to like it because exactly. they'll listen. But, yeah. they're, but for people that are starting to come up, mm-hmm. that's not going to work for you. Yeah. It's just not. People, people don't want that. Yeah. They want – authenticity and the, and they want growth yeah and, and you don't even have if you found the one thing you love it but it's all in you like you don't have to go and try to do a bunch of different genres or anything like that like do whatever makes you happy but right. if you're interested in doing it do it with your whole do it with your whole heart never yeah. have any like what if i would have tried that you can't let anything stop you as far as that goes yeah and i think what you said about being independent is a huge thing because that's another thing with the internet yeah you don't need record companies anymore no. you just don't Not at and all. Th- and they i can only imagine what some of those guys said to you to try and make you think that that's still the way things were yeah not at all that's so f- that's it's fucked and like 
at least the, at least that's coming to an end you know what i mean yeah that's my favorite thing about like that's the best part about the internet is like you can learn about whatever industry and strive in it yourself it's going to take a fuck lot more work you're but you're and you're but you're gonna have way more freedom you're going to be in complete control of you know how the funds are spent everything you own your rights to everything i mean besides like sponsorships and whatnot but that's obviously that's just part of the game but it's you can learn something and just completely flourish in it without like the big like someone's above you with fucking the little puppet right trying yeah. to like string you along what that's exciting um yeah no i mean i, I, I was that <laughs> yeah. i actually absorbed compared to the, uh, the social media conversation yeah. so i'm glad we did that um but i do think it's about that time andy um i do have well, a surprise okay I love surprise. I love when people. I don't know what it is. Don't do it, dude. This is what I think it is. Don't you fucking dare. It is damn know. well what I thought you think it is. Oh, this guy told me he wanted to rock a captive jersey. Man. And he says number one on the back. Are you fucking with That's me? That's for you, pal. Absolutely not. Dude. That's the one. Look at this. It, <laughs> show it to the camera. So the camera I can't see it. It can't. I can't my camera can oh. see it. I don't captive. Know camera oh. Is. You love to Dude, see it. if I tell you how much this means to me, you're not going to believe it. Dude, you were saying it. it was like two months ago, and I was like, dude, next time they have me on the show, I'm going to have this bitch ready. It's... Boom. <laughs> I don't even want to say it on mic. <laughs> like, what? Because I don't want... It's like... This is one of those situations where, like, I feel the truth may almost sound insincere. Yeah. Because the thing is, so honestly, with the P. Millie one on the back... I thought this is how you sold them. No, nah, yeah. So when I when I asked you about that, yeah, yeah, and I realized I panicked first of all because like, oh fuck, like, I don't nah, want to fucking keep it. You know what I mean? It. Yeah. But but um, just the whole fact that you would even like trust me with this, it means a lot, dude. Of course, you're one you of are. our favorite fucking guys to talk to. I think Anytime. anybody that listened to this podcast, especially the last couple minutes there. Straight up, I think you're a creative genius. Thank you, man. And um, I mean, we could we could go on and on about in, all that. In due time, in due time, in due time. Everyone man. will see what we have cooking up around here, guys. I can't wait. Yep, yep. Big stuff. You want to take us out, Matthew? Nothing. Um, that, well, dude. just in case you guys have missed it before, um, when Preston was on, um. P. Melly, tell them where, you know, they can find you, find your music, all that stuff. Uh, whatever you listen to your music on, whether you're on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Amazon, whatever you may be on. Uh, P. Millie, P. Space Millie, you'll find me there. Artist name, uh, Instagram, P. G. Millie. Uh, Twitter, P. Millie. TikTok, it's P. Millie. I-T-S-P-M-I-L-L-Y. Other than that, uh Keep uh, keep an eye out. A lot of special stuff coming. Winter is content mode. So, or like the brainstorming for it and the recording and to get ready for kind of when everything opens back up. Nice weather and everyone's back outside all listening to music together again. So, uh, it's, but something, the, uh, the announcement that I made about that Bills anthem, it's coming. I'm excited about it. And uh, hopefully you hear it at a, a Bills game very, very soon. That you're definitely going to want to check out. Yeah. Uh, Preston, thank you so much for coming on. Like Absolutely, Andrew said, we always love, to, love you know, having you come here and talk. It's a blast. Hell yeah. Appreciate um, you guys. Uh, yeah, so shout out to uh, 13 Monkeys. Um, check out the Hoodwin of the Week. And yeah. you don't have to tag them at the end. They didn't pay us for that. Oh, well, I like them. I like their whiskey. <laughs> yeah, it's true. They are good. Is it good whiskey? So, yeah. yeah. We got some I'm a tequila guy, it. but I guess I'll yeah. try it. I'll give it a little sample um, size. So I was just re, you know, yeah, re-influencing it. Sorry. No, it's no Andrew's problem. Andrew's pissed at me now. <laughs> yeah. Um, it doesn't matter. I still love you. <laughs> I love you too, man. Preston, you're a fucking man. Let's get out of here. Guys, Thanks, folks. Thanks absolutely. for listening.